is Sean T. Barnes, a Melbourne-based artist working primarily in video. I work as a director and cinematographer and also often as an editor. Uh, as well as my video work, I create photographic images. Uh, in this side of things, I work mainly in analog uh, cameras and shooting on 35mm film. As with a lot of people, I just am in love with the colour space of film and the, the grit and the grain of it. Um, I also found that working with film really kind of suits not only my aesthetic, but also my workflow. So I studied film and television at Swinburne University. Uh, and after finishing there, moving into music videos just seemed like an obvious move. Uh, it's a very relevant format still, even though it's been around for so long, in a time where there's just so much content out there and on the internet, television, whatever, people don't have a huge amount of time to take it all in, but somehow music videos, uh, they still get people. I mean, I myself is guilty of watching a video but skipping through to the minute mark, two minute mark, you know, just skipping through the whole thing, not spending the time that should be spent on, you know, a piece. Uh, but somehow music video people still watch start to end and um, that's kind of why I make them still. So in the past I've worked with both musicians here locally in Melbourne and interstate artists from Sydney and Brisbane. I find the collaborative side of clip making really varies from clip to clip. Uh, sometimes it's about sitting down with an artist and delivering an idea that you have, or sometimes about listening to the idea that they have, and then just kind of working it out from there together. On other projects I've worked on, it's been more so about being contacted from afar via phone or email. And in these instances, making a video has been more about creating something to complement the audio rather than creating a visualization of the audio. And I actually kind of think I enjoy it more when it's less about showing the performance of a song and more about taking the feel or the message of the song and expanding that. So the first clip that I made for Ben Salter was for a song called Tremulous. And at the time, Ben was based in Brisbane, and I was in Melbourne. Uh, so they got in contact with me, him and his management, through email and just wanted to get some ideas about what could possibly be done as a clip for the song. Um, we just got to talking about what the mood of the song was and, and what it was really about. And I wanted to focus in on the anxiety of it, as well as more audibly the reverberating bass line of it. Uh, so from there I created a treatment of found images just to convey a mood that I wanted to hit and also found images had created an animatic of the effects that I wanted to do within the clip uh, and Ben was into that. So in the finished cup, Ben doesn't actually feature in the clip, I feel like we built something that expands on the original intentions of the song while exists as something else as well as the song and experiencing both the visual and and the audio together really heightens the experience of what either would feel like separately, which I guess is the most you could ever really aim for in, in creating music videos. And with the tremendous clip, just coming back again to the format of music videos, it's such a simple idea and a simple execution. Uh, if it was in a longer piece, it would maybe be a part of something, but the fact that it is in a you know, three, four, five minute kind of clip, it means that that idea, that just that pure idea is, is the clip, is the focus of the clip, the visual side of the clip. Uh, and that's why it's nice working in music videos because you can, it, it can be a simple idea as the main character, as the hero. On the other side of filmmaking, actually featuring the artist and a performance element, uh, I've been lucky enough to come across and encounter artists who are after doing something kind of a bit weird or different. 
Uh, so for example, we made two clips for an artist called Big Strong Brute. Our two good friends of mine, Mary Minas, producing them and Patrick McCabe editing them. Uh, and in both clips, we decided to make the performance element uh, live performance and not a live video as in the, the act on stage, but more of a, a narrative or a drama aesthetic and admittedly not huge story arcs, more of a, a mumble core uh, approach. Uh, but making or mixing those kind of genres and presenting it as a music video it felt good because it felt, it felt a bit strange. So a really good clip experience I've had recently uh, has been making a trio of linked music videos for Melbourne Act Vinci Presents, uh, which is the solo project of Vincent Giarusu, who is the lead singer of Underground Lovers. Uh, and Vince I've actually known for quite a while because he was my writing, directing lecturer at university. Uh, and I've worked with him doing visual, like live video projections for Underground Lovers for quite some time. So we have this rapport. And when he first asked me to do, first of all, it was one clip for his solo stuff, and then it was three clips, we already had this kind of uh, visual language to go off in, as, as well as knowing what each of us really like and each of our styles, we have a very similar taste. In, in visual art, Vince and I. So the kind of impetus for the first clip that I made, which actually turned into the running theme throughout all three clips, uh, was based on the first line of Baseless Needs, which is, nice to see you, your face is real. Uh, and the kind of idea that I had was a feeling the I personally get where sometimes I'm mid-conversation and I'll hear my own voice and it triggers this kind of uh, discontent almost between what I see myself as or how I feel as, as myself and then hearing myself and stepping that back outside of myself and trying to connect that again. Uh, and I told this to Vince and, and he thought it was strange but like also a very unusual uh, Thing to base a music video on uh, and he was up for it so it was cool to run with that and have that trust behind it uh, from Vince. So that kind of moment of self-awareness or, or jolting self-awareness was uh, what those Vincey trio of clips was based on, the images came from, although it's not the story that it tells, uh, it's just the images come from that feeling. And especially with those clips, it felt like it was a, it, it was a process of searching and finding the images that gave that mood and something that felt visceral and played with perception and played with light. And as I was saying before, the music video just felt like the perfect format to spend time searching for that with the images.
My name is Daniel Marola and I'm a filmmaker based in Melbourne. Well, I grew up in North Queensland. Uh, I was raised in a musical family. My dad is a musician and uh, my mum's an artist. So I think the creative genes were there uh, from the get-go. So um, yeah, and being the youngest uh, sibling of four, um, yeah, I was, I was heavily influenced by my older siblings who are musicians. And um, so th there was always that, that creative vibe around the house. I developed a passion for filmmaking uh, from from my dad. Basically, we he always had video cameras around, so we we always uh, made short short funny clips and skits and stuff at home. So uh, with the cousins and and with the siblings. So um, yeah, it, it was always there. There was always a video camera around, and we could always create. Being a musician myself, I play five instruments, and um, yeah, so I. I I wanted to join the, the two passions I have, which is music and filmmaking together. And, and um, yeah, music videos are the way to go. Um, I, I just, yeah, I developed a passion for that. Um, yeah, just making people feel um, something from the song that, that, yeah, just giving that visual aspect to the song um, is very special, I think. The first music video I ever worked on was called Burn So Cold and it was a friend of mine named Ash Ball. Uh, he's a singer-songwriter from Melbourne and um, and yeah, we, we, he, he approached me with the song and I and yeah, we, we just went for it basically. We, we shot over two days in Melbourne and, and come up with a pretty cool concept and video uh, and then from there I sort of yeah, got approached um, by all, all sorts of artists from, from all genres of music. Um, to, to create videos for them. Uh, when an artist approaches me to do a music video for them, I, um, I get them to send me through the song uh, and also the lyrics. Um, we have a brief chat and a brief talk about what the song means to them and what, what they want it to portray, uh, what they want the viewer to feel um, when, they, when they listen to the song and when they watch the film clip. Then I, I just listen to the song over and over again. I've just got it on repeat for days and you know just trying to get some sort of um, inspiration uh, for that may spark some ideas here and there. Then I usually break up the clip into two components. So one of them is performance scenes, where there'd be um, be scenes and, and shots of of the artist singing the song in different locations, um, depending on what the clip's about. Uh, and the other component would be the the storytelling side of things, so the acting and the drama scenes uh, that would help help tell the story along the way. Um, yeah, this method sort of works for most film clips, but uh, obviously not for all. But um, but yeah, it seems to be the style that I've chosen and that works for me, uh, that I feel comfortable working in. Yeah, I like working with different artists because um, different genres sort of lead themselves into different styles of video. So um, I had a bluegrass duo that I worked with um, on a couple of clips. They're called the Davidson Brothers. They're from Melbourne. And, um, and yeah, being country, they... We, we went out into country Victoria and, and, and shot um, different scenes out there. So that showing, that showing the country for those sort of clips, whereas a pop song might be more in a studio with controlled lighting and, and different lighting effects um, to reflect that genre of music. So yeah, I think it's important to marry the, the, the style of video with the, with the style of, of song as well. Well, coming up on the horizon for me, I think I just want to keep collaborating with more artists and uh, and working with with different filmmakers and other people in the creative industry um, yeah I think it's it's special when when people get together when create especially when creative people get together and 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 come up with and work towards one goal uh, come up with different ideas um, yeah it's really magical it's 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 always exciting and it, it makes the the job super fun <laughs> Well, I first started working with Indigenous Australians uh, back in 2007, where I was invited out on a on a Red Dust tour. Uh, that's Red Dust Role Models, an NGO that that promote healthy lifestyles in, in Indigenous communities. Um, and I was working on behalf of a music workshop called Muso Magic, where we'd write a song and produce a film clip within a week uh, with with the kids in schools. So, um, so from there, basically, Museo Magic then created a TV show from that, uh, where they display their um, music videos that we'd create, and also have positive stories in between. And uh, a good friend of mine, Mitch Tambo, uh, is the host of that show. So we've uh, we've travelled together um, for two series now, two 13-part series uh, that's been shown on Imparja and NITV. 
Mitch is a singer songwriter himself, so he's got an album out called Guramali. And when he released that, uh, just a song really stood out to me. It's called Wallambar. Well, talking to Mitch and finding out what the song's about and what it means to him and his culture is um, is to be strong within your culture. So I wanted to have um, faces on the screen, just strong uh, Aboriginal prominent faces. Um, that sort of tell their own story. So, you know, when you look into some, some people's faces and that just, that, that's enough to tell, you know, that tells the whole history, the whole past, just by looking into their eyes. So I really wanted to get that across in the clip. Um, so we got a bunch of his relatives together and, and a few other people that he, that he knew. And, um, and we just shot that within a day. We just went and just, just did some, some headshots and just looking straight down the barrel of the camera. Uh, we also shot some performance scenes from Mitch, so um, dancing around the campfire. Uh, that was in Torquay at a winery. So we, we set up a campfire and, and just had a yeah, really great creative night there, just around the campfire, just getting different shots and experimenting with, with slow motion and different sort of um, different sort of techniques and lenses. Basically, then we just put it together in editing, and, um, and yeah, we had a clip. I'm Mitch Tambo. I'm a Gamilaroi Birrigubba man and I live here in Melbourne, Victoria. So the whole process of uh, finally sitting down and writing Wollombar and uh, the whole album came from the push of my dad, um, actually, because I've been a traditional performer for many years, but had never actually thought that I could sit down and write and create my own songs. And one day we just got talking and he was like, you need to basically hurry up and do it and uh, put your CD out there because everywhere we go and when we perform people were always asking if I had a CD or something that they could walk away with so I got myself a loop pedal and um, I sat down and started figuring it out and uh, within seven days I had seven tracks and within a fortnight I went down to the studio and I laid my tracks down and started working with this awesome uh, engineer Simon Russell who's the uh, founder and owner of Deep Switch Records so I finally got it all down and I worked with him and um, from there, uh, Dan approached me and was like, do you want to make a music video? And I was like, when? And he was like, now, this afternoon. So it was basically two days before we actually had to go on tour for a couple of weeks and we had heaps to do. So I quickly ran home, did all my shopping for a wedding I had when I got back and we basically hit the city and we were into it for about 48 hours straight shooting Wallenbar and throwing around ideas of, you know, um, what I wanted it to look like, what I wanted people to feel when they watched it, what was the story of Wallenbar and what was the true essence of it and how could that be portrayed via a music video. So we are pretty much on the fly having these deep discussions of how I felt about the song and what I really wanted to get across on the screen and what I wanted people to feel and that's really how it all began, the music video of Wallenbar. If someone asked me point blank, if they said, Mitch, what's the story of Wallenbar and what is it exactly that you wanted to portray? My answer would be strength, strength in culture and strength in our people. And I feel that um, with Dan and I working together and collaborating, we were really able to, to tell that story, to portray that story and to get that story across quite um, transparently. Throughout the music video of Wallenbar, you see many faces appear. And to me, they really represent the diverse strength and nature of us as Aboriginal people that we have. You see children, you see elders, you see fathers, mothers, you see strong cultural people. And I feel that that captures very much a massive diverse pocket of who we are as Aboriginal people. Yes, we wear many hats and yes, it goes much deeper than that. But I feel that when those faces appear and you see the children, you see the strong men, the strong women, you see some of our strong activists in our communities are in that clip and I feel it really gives a really good um, view of who we are and really showcases the strength of us. Here's my clip Wallenbar, I hope you like it. Bye. 